Tonight, comprehensive coverage of the Pope's visit. He makes a plea to families during his service at St. Patrick's, and a new school's chancellor is named tonight. This is the Tri-State Area's news leader, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, with Sarah Wallace, Mark Stevens with sports, Veronica Johnson with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. <laughs> Central Park turns into an outdoor cathedral as tens of thousands say Mass with Pope John Paul. And inside at St. Patrick's, a plea from the Pope for families to remain strong and remain together. Good evening, I'm Sarah Wallace. In prayer, in song, and with his blessings, Pope John Paul touched the lives of hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers today. After blessing the Vatican's UN mission this evening, the Pope held historic meetings with other Christian leaders as well as Jewish and Muslim leaders. Earlier, John Paul II caught worshipers by surprise when he took an impromptu stroll up Fifth Avenue. For many, an unexpected chance to see the Pope up close. The day began in Central Park with an emotional mass and a message. The Pope led a flock of faithful in prayer on the Great Lawn, and that is where Tim Mitten is live for us tonight. Tim? Sarah, we are on stage where stage hands had to suspend their cleanup tonight because of the heavy rains that made it dangerous, but this will still come down a lot faster than the two weeks it took to construct. Still, for now, most of the giant altar remains as a reminder of the day the Pope and Park came together with the faithful. There were more than 100,000 of the faithful crowded on a muddy great lawn on a gray and misty day. Still, unlike crowds Thursday and Friday, Pope John Paul observed that Saturday celebrants remained both dry and cool. No rain, no sun. <laughs> Thank you to God. Except for a seated VIP section up front, most had room only to stand and cheer. Minutes later, the Holy Father began his homily, rallying his flock to the aid of the underprivileged. So you too are called to visit the needs of the poor, the hungry, the homeless, those who are alone or ill. For example, those suffering from AIDS. Then came another directive with a familiar, if controversial, appeal. You are called to work and pray against abortion. First time ever I saw your face. Earlier, Daybreak was ushered in along with ticket holders by music from popular artists Roberta Flack, John Cicada, and Natalie Cole, who joined together for an all-star pre-pope finale. Glory, glory. But the masses came for the mass, not the concert, and didn't appear disappointed, especially when the pontiff thanked them then for the pleasure. You can tell the whole world that you gave the Pope his Christmas present already in October in New York in Central Park. Which led to this unscheduled musical response. Memories tonight from the papal flowers that remain strewn. They'll be cleaned up to the rest of this stage and altar, scheduled to be cleaned up by Wednesday, and then the public will have access once again back to the Great Lawn, which is where we're live tonight. Tim Minton, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. What a memory and what a day. The Pope had a very busy schedule all day, and this evening he reached out to other religious leaders in various meetings. John Paul met with more than 50 Jewish, Muslim, and Christian leaders tonight. N.J. Burkett is live in Midtown with more. N.J.? Sarah, the Pope has spent virtually his entire visit preaching, in a way, to the converted. Early this evening, he did something that was a little more political, perhaps, than spiritual. Oh, my God! 
Over the past several days, John Paul II has made a spiritual connection with thousands of Catholic New Yorkers. Tonight, he made time to meet with the leaders of the city's other churches. It helped me to take the measure of his genuineness, if I can express it that way. People like Talib Abdul Rashid, the spiritual leader for 60 Muslim families in Harlem. It serves as a kind of spiritual shot in the arm for the, the citizenry of New York, and that's certainly needed. Even among Christians, there are profound differences. While they might agree on diagnosing the ills of society, they disagree strongly about the cure. It's a little like uh, President Clinton and, uh, and Newt Gingrich meeting in, uh, in New Hampshire. Protestant clergy said tonight that these kinds of face-to-face -face meetings are crucial. We can find a way to hold hands. And he doesn't have to change his position on some things, and I don't have to change mine. But there's something there between us that holds us together. If you begin to walk together, then you can begin to talk together. The Pope saved the last meeting of his New York visit for leaders of the city's Jewish community. What do you bring back to the people of Stephen Wise? That he's a, an extraordinarily charismatic human person. And that's what touches people, his humanity. His message is very powerful, even though we don't agree. The message, the broad message, is something that we can all share in. Religious leaders admit that tonight's meetings were largely symbolic, but they say, too, that the Vatican didn't have to schedule anything. Symbolism, especially this kind, they say, counts for an awful lot. We're live tonight in Midtown Manhattan. N.J. Burke at Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The Pope did something today that nobody expected, but everyone seemed to enjoy. He took a surprise stroll down Fifth Avenue to the delight of thousands of followers, but to the dismay of his bodyguards. The Holy Father just plunged into the crowd and mingled with those who had gathered outside St. Patrick's Cathedral. The Pope